Hello, my name is Kevin Vigil, and I'd like to welcome you to this collection of short videos on playing the guitar with your brain. With the exceptions of this introduction, each presentation will be devoted to a particular guitar or music-related task. Topics to be discussed will include information processing and practice, the motor system, how we move, left hand shifting with the somatosensory system, improving accuracy and minimizing tension with fine touch, reading music, and making musical decisions with the limbic system. Now before delving into these specific topics, let's discuss some brain basics. This is a model of a human brain. Most of our discussions will involve the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum. But there are many other parts of the brain that we will not discuss, which involve such things as homeostasis. The prominent feature on this model is the cerebral cortex. Notice that it appears to be wrinkled. These wrinkles are actually folds in the cortex that allow the brain to fit within the confines of the skull. Now, should the brain be unfolded, it would be approximately two square feet. There are different depths of these wrinkles and folds. A small indentation is called a gyrus, with the plural being gyri. A deeper fold would be called a sulcus, with the plural being called sulci. And a larger fold would be called a fissure. Now, let's identify a few specific areas that will be important to recognize. First, let's get oriented to this model. This is the front of the head, and this is the back of the head. The brain grows in a C shape, which creates what is called the sylvian fissure. If we look at the top of this model, at approximately the midpoint, this is the central sulcus of Rolando. Then, toward the back of the brain, we see the parietal occipital sulcus. I would also like to bring your attention to this part of the brain. This is the cerebellum, which plays a major role in our ability to play the guitar. While looking at this cerebellum, I want you to think about this for a moment. The brain contains approximately 100 billion neurons. 50 to 70% of these neurons are located here in the cerebellum. This is how important the cerebellum is to what we do, not only as musicians, but as human beings. To make it easier to identify parts of the brain, let's look at this graphic. The parts of the brain are clearly labeled, but look at this graphic and this model as we identify these parts. So we'll start with the cerebellum that I just mentioned. This is the temporal lobe as defined by the sylvian fissure. At the back of the head, this is the occipital lobe, which borders with the parietal lobe at the parietal occipital sulcus. The parietal lobe is defined by the parietal occipital sulcus and the central sulcus of Rolando. From the central sulcus of Rolando to the front of the head is the frontal lobe. Now, to identify the functions that reside in the lobes of the cerebral cortex, we will be using Rodman's maps. This image on the left is the lateral view which is the outside surface. The image on the right is the medial view. Brodman was a neuroscientist who noticed various organizations of neurons and identified about 50 areas based on their differences. Later, scientists recognized that Brodman's map actually identified specific abilities located in the cerebral cortex. These two graphics represent the lateral and the medial surfaces of the cerebral cortex. We will not discuss each Brodmann area in this series, 
but only those that are relevant to playing music. Now, let's go back to our brain model. You'll notice that the cerebral cortex is divided into two sections. Each of these sections is called a hemisphere. We identify them as the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. Each hemisphere shares the same Brodmann map, which means that the functions that exist in one hemisphere also exist in the other. The two hemispheres are connected by the corpus callosum. While these hemispheres are homotopic, some abilities tend to be dominant in one hemisphere over the other. For example, language is believed to be dominant in the left hemisphere, whether if a person is right or left-handed. Additionally, the two hemispheres of the cerebral cortex have a contralateral relationship. This means that the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. The areas associated with music are of particular interest in this series. It turns out that brains of professional musicians tend to be different from those of non-musicians. Non-musicians have a dominance of rhythm appreciation in the left hemisphere, while appreciation of melody and harmony is in the right hemisphere. In the professional musician, appreciation of rhythm, melody, and harmony are all dominant in the left hemisphere. Before concluding this introductory segment, it is important to recognize that much of what neuroscientists have learned about the brain and its functions are due to brain trauma and disease. Not all things are neurologically possible for all people. I am constantly reminded and inspired by those who were born with a loss of function or lose an ability due to trauma and still manage to be successful. If you are a teacher that works with a student who struggles, I ask that you exercise patience, compassion, and to create multiple strategies to help your students succeed. Thank you.